Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be showing you how to make this blueberry plushie. To start off, these are the materials you will need. You will need 12 millimeter safety eyes and the backs. You will need a four millimeter hook or a G, some yarn, some scissors, a yarn or tapestry needle. Right, to start you're going to grab your yarn and make a magic ring and do six single crochet into your magic ring. Make sure that your magic ring does not twist as you're doing your stitches into it. And then you're going to pull that magic ring tight, as tight as you can, until that hole in the middle is closed. For the next row, you are going to increase in each stitch around. So that is putting two single crochet into each stitch around. I like to also crochet over that tail from where you pulled your magic circle tight so that there's a little less to weave in at the end. You may also want to use a stitch marker to mark the beginning of your row so that as you're going around you know exactly where your row started. So if you haven't done that yet, go ahead and grab a stitch marker and insert it into that first stitch of your, your round. For the next round we're going to alternate putting one single crochet in the next and two single crochet in the next stitch. So again you are alternating one single crochet and two single crochet. And this is where having that stitch marker may come in handy so that you don't lose track of the beginning of the row when you're making your repeats. For the next round, you're going to alternate doing two single crochets and then an increase in the next stitch. So do your two single crochet and then two single crochets in the same stitch for your increase. You are going to repeat that all the way around back to where you put your stitch marker in if you're using a stitch marker. So go ahead and repeat that until you reach the end of the row. For the next round, you are going to be doing three single crochet and then an increase. So do three single crochets and then increase in the next stitch. 
Again, you're doing three single crochet and then an increase. You're going to repeat that all the way around to the beginning of the round. For the next row, you are going to be doing four single crochet and then increase in the next stitch. Again, you will be doing four single crochet and then an increase in the next stitch. You are going to repeat that pattern all the way around to the beginning of the round. For this next row, you are going to be doing five single crochet and then an increase stitch. Let's go ahead and do your five single crochet. And then you'll do two single crochet in the following stitch to do your increase. As you can see, I have added my stitch marker for me to see the beginning of each round at this point. When you get near the end of the round, go ahead and start moving that stitch marker up to start your following round. Alright, the next step is you are going to do about 10 rounds of just single crochet all the way around. So you're going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around for the next 10 rounds.
After 10 rounds, it should look something like this here. For the next round, you are going to do five single crochet and then a decrease. So you do five single crochet. And then you'll decrease across the next two stitches. So you'll insert your hook into the front loop of the next stitch and the front loop of the following stitch. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. You'll repeat doing five single crochet. And then you'll decrease across the next two stitches by inserting your hook into the front loop of the next stitch and the front loop of the following stitch. Then yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. You'll repeat those same steps all the way back to the beginning of the round. That round should end with a decrease stitch. Let's so go ahead and do your decrease and then start moving your stitch marker up to show the start of the following round. The next round will be four single crochets and then a decrease. So you'll start with your four single crochets. And then you'll decrease across the following two stitches. Insert your hook in the front loop of the next stitch and the front loop of the following stitch. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. You'll repeat again with four single crochets and then a decrease. You will repeat that pattern all the way around to the start of the round. Again, like your previous round, this round also ends in a decreased stitch. On your next round, go ahead and move your stitch marker up. You will be doing three single crochets and then a decrease. So go ahead and do three single crochet and then a decrease stitch across the next two. So you'll insert your hook into the front loop again and the following front loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. You'll repeat that pattern again by doing three single crochet and then a decrease. That pattern repeats all the way back to the beginning of the round.
go ahead and move your stitch marker up and this row will be two single crochets and then a decrease so do two single crochet and then a decrease across the next two remember decrease only using the front loops you will repeat that pattern all the way around to the beginning of the round your two single crochet and then decrease working in the back loops only. So go ahead and move your stitch marker. This next round, you're going to do one single crochet in the back loop only, and then a decrease, this time in the back loops only. So it's the same as you do the decrease in the front loops, you're just using the back loops this time. You will need those front loops later in the pattern. That is why we will be using the back loops only for this round. So again, you're repeating that pattern of one single crochet in the back loop only, and then they decrease using the back loops of the next two stitches. That pattern repeats all the way around to the beginning of that round making sure you are only using the back loops of each stitch. It should be starting to close off here. So this would be a good time to add your safety eyes to your project. So go ahead and decide where you would like your safety eyes. Go ahead and stick them through. Just a few stitches apart from each other. And go ahead and look at it, see if you like the placement. You can adjust to a different row if you're not liking where you placed them. And go ahead and put the backs on your safety eyes once you have the placement you would like. Once you have your safety eyes in place, now is a great time to go ahead and stuff your blueberry. So go ahead and grab your stuffing and start stuffing your blueberry. When you're stuffing, be careful to not let your stitches fall out. You want your blueberry to be a little bit squishy, but still a little bit firm. Go ahead and add stuffing to your liking at this point. You can always add more at the next row if you think that one's not enough. See, mine's still really squishy, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. You want to add enough stuffing 
that it's a little bit firm, but not too much to the point that it's coming through the stitches or that you can see the stuffing clearly through your stitches. Once you have your blueberry stuffed to your liking, go ahead and continue on to your next row. So move your stitch marker up and you're going to decrease in each stitch around. It'll be a bit harder to add stuffing if it's not to your liking, so get it as close as you can at this point. This final round, you'll be decreasing in each stitch across. So you should have about six decreases for this final round. If you find that you're having a hard time doing those stitches because you stuffed it too full, go ahead and take some out. When you're at the end of that round, you are going to cut the yarn. So go ahead and pull up a loop, leaving a decently long tail, and go ahead and cut your yarn. I'm gonna go ahead and move my stitch marker down to that first front loop. In the row where we stitched in the back loops, you can see that front loop circling around my blueberry here. You're going to need that to add the decorative top of your blueberry. The next thing I'm going to do is grab my tapestry or yarn needle, thread the yarn through, and I'm going to insert the needle into the front loop of all of those last stitches on that last round. I'm gonna go all the way around. You should have about six stitches there at the end to insert your needle into. Once you're at that last one, go ahead and pull tight. It should close up your blueberry. And then you can just go ahead and tuck that end in. I would come out the side somewhere. You will tie that off later. You can go ahead and add the mouth now, or you can wait till the end to add your mouth to your blueberry. Next, I'm gonna show you how to add that decorative top. To add the decorative top, you're going to start with a slip knot here in your yarn that you cut off. Go ahead and find where you put that stitch marker. Insert the yarn. You're going to chain two here. So go ahead and chain two. You're then going to do two double crochets and a single crochet in that front loop. You're gonna repeat that all the way around in each front loop. You're going to do two double crochets and a single crochet in each one.
Once you reach the end of that round, you can go ahead and take out that stitch marker. You'll be able to see the beginning of the round because you have that tail right there. You are going to do one single crochet in each stitch around. Make sure you're not single crocheting over that tail from where you attached the yarn. Once you reach the end, you're going to go ahead and do one slip stitch, pull the yarn through, and go ahead and cut that off. Go ahead and thread your needle again. And go ahead and weave that back through. I'm going to weave it through the next stitch. I'm just going to kind of go down my double crochets. I'm going to go ahead and tuck it into the center of my blueberry and I'm going to come out that same stitch as my other end. I'm going to do the same with that starting tail. I'm going to go ahead and thread my needle, take it through the center of my blueberry and out that same stitch that those other two tails are in. I'm going to go ahead and tie my tails together. I'm going to tie them tightly so that that knot goes inside my blueberry. Go ahead and do a double knot so that they don't come out. And then I'm going to take the end of my needle and just kind of, kind of push that knot inside my blueberry. Take the ends and thread my needle again. I took both of my ends this time. I'm going to go back through that same stitch, go through my blueberry. You can go through as many times as you need. 
so that the ends are hidden. I'm just going to go through a couple of times. There's some different places on my blueberry. It doesn't really matter which places you go through, you're just hiding the tails inside of the blueberry. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut the remaining ends off. All that I have left is to go ahead and add the mouth. To add the mouth, you're going to need a small piece of black yarn or your desired mouth color. Go ahead and thread your needle. Insert your hook off to the side of where you would like your mouth. Come up through the corner of where you like the mouth. Make sure you leave a little bit of yarn here. Come down a row and a couple stitches over. Insert your hook. Come up on the other side of where you would like your mouth. And back through the center, making sure to come out where you came in to start your mouth. That will create a little V-shaped mouth. Then you can go ahead and tie the ends together. Tie it tightly, but not too tight. You don't want it pulling the mouth out of shape. And then go ahead and tuck that end in. I go ahead and thread your needle and go back through the stitch and come out the other side. If you still have any yarn sticking out, go ahead and cut that off at this point. There you have it. Your blueberry should be complete. It should look something like this. If you decide to make a blueberry, go ahead and tag me in your post. If you go ahead and post it to social media, all the links will be in the description as well as the link to the written pattern. They'll all be in the description. Thank you so much for watching my tutorial. Go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already.